Good weather. Okay, in this video, we're going to take a look at how I draw geodesic structures in SketchUp. I'm using SketchUp 2015, uh, and I often get asked, um, "Can I have a 3D model of the plans? Um, how do you draw a 3D model?" Or I'm I'm drawing a 3D model and it's not working out. There's pretty much one way to draw uh, geometric structures, um, and it isn't. Uh, let me show you the way that it isn't first by adding one triangle to the next triangle to the next triangle and going all the way around and joining them up and then doing the next string that won't work and um, that's how you build it in real life but it won't work on a computer and um, so I'm going to do a series of videos showing uh, how to draw all the various different geodesic shapes uh, we'll, we'll do we'll start with a basic thing like an icosahedron I'll do that on this tutorial uh, then we move on to other um, solids and then up to two three four frequency geodesics and other things as well um, and that'll give you uh, an idea about creating your own structures and how um, how the, the quirks if you like of how a, a 3d modeling package uh, works best in this to, to build this type of structure. Right, uh, let's start by um, how to do it wrong. Um, I had a got a tutorial off YouTube showing how to make a dodecahedron. So I, I followed the instructions, and the basic principle is that uh, the second uh, pentagon, the center of that, if you lift up the corner where it in, intersects a line, that gives you the right angle to build the um, dodecahedron. And um, as you, if we watch a little further on, you can see what the problem is. There we go. It's um, gappy. Uh, that's no good. That uh, if you use that to build, um, if you use that to build a geodesic dome, it would be. Well, the measurements would be out of whack. Uh, you wouldn't get anything to work at all well. So you have to avoid those little tiny uh, lines. So now let's take a look at how to do it correctly. Um, and we'll start with a golden rectangle. Uh, your computer will snap a square, it'll snap a golden rectangle and that that will be uh, accurate to dozens of decimal places. If you were to put measurements in trying to, to, trying to uh, get a golden rectangle it wouldn't work because the measurements would be to a given decimal place but they wouldn't be wholly accurate uh, so that's why it's it's important to use the snap function on your computer okay now that we've produced our golden rectangle we need to rotate it uh, copy and rotate about two axes um, I'll show you that now uh, and we need to do that twice and that forms um, a group of golden rectangles. We're going to use the snap function uh, to rotate 90 degrees exactly one direction and then 90 deg degrees uh, on another plane. Uh, we do that twice and that f forms our, what would you call it? You'd call it a um, template to build uh, the icosahedron. Right, I'm going to stick a cross uh, on one of the golden rectangles just to mark the center. And that's pretty much just done now. All we have to do is join the corners uh, to form our icosahedron. Uh, what I would do though is uh, make one face uh, and rather than um, join all the corners with lines and, and make a solid um, icosahedron, make one face make that into a component in SketchUp um, and then rotate that face around all of the other points um, and this gives you control over a, a, a face and once you if you change something on that face it'll change on all the faces if you just sketched all, around all the corners uh, you'd have to change every face individually if you were wanting to make any changes
I'll just very quickly change the orientation because uh, making it this way ha has an edge at the top and we want a point at the top so I'll um, just take any plane doesn't matter put a corner to the top and that makes the point of the icosahedron at the top uh, and from here we can just um, we have placed four panels top middle and bottom uh, we can then rotate those four panels around the uh, icosahedron five times just to copy it copy and paste five times and that will produce a solid um, icosahedron finally we'll uh, make a copy and explode that copy uh, so that it's just a collection of lines now uh, and from this point we can use the move tool to pull at the icosahedron and if it stretches lines that means they're all connected if you were to pull and it moved away from the icosahedron it would mean that um, the lines didn't meet exactly so by pulling it like this and being able to uh, pull and deform it that um, is a, a, a good way of checking to make sure that your um, icosahedron has all proper edges and it doesn't have any double edges that are really close together okay that's the icosahedron done uh, which is the I would say the basic form for all geodesic structures um, I'm going to continue the series so subscribe if you want to see uh, more advanced and different how, how to draw more advanced uh, geodesic structures and I'll, I'll add them up uh, when I have time but if you subscribe you should get a notification uh, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next one